Since the Ryzen 3000 series has been launched, there's been a CPU that I believe is probably going to be the most popular of the bunch. And that is the Ryzen 5 3600. Now in my reviewer's kit, I got sent the 3700X and the 3900X. So I couldn't check this little guy out here right away, but a 200 USD with an included cooler, I believe it's gonna represent probably some of the best value for money that the CPU market has to offer. But something else I'm going to be doing a little bit different here today is chucking it on an A320 motherboard since from my results, at least what I've found here, especially in the Zen 2 review, if you haven't seen that already, I'll put the link up here, is that the Zen 2 CPUs, the new Ryzen 3000 CPUs, they are a lot more efficient compared to the 1000 and 2000 series AMD CPUs. And they're also more efficient than Intel CPUs. So I have this little sixth sense where an A320 motherboard like this could support this little CPU and you'd have absolutely no problems whatsoever. And you'd also be getting extremely good value for money. Though with that aside, let's put this CPU on this motherboard and also test it against an X570 motherboard to see if you are really losing out on a whole lot by going with a budget motherboard like this. Now we're also going to be running today's tests on the new Trident Z Neo. G-Skill sent us over a couple of these sticks to test on the new X570 motherboards, but I'm gonna be testing it on the A320 motherboards. Now the special thing about the Trident Z Neo is that it's designed specifically for AMD Ryzen CPUs and especially the new Ryzen 3000 chips. What we've got here is some 3600 CL16 timings. So this stuff is going to be extremely fast for getting the most performance out of your new Ryzen CPUs. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and here we've got the A320 motherboard on our test bed setup. But one thing you're probably going to have to do if you get a 300 series motherboard or a 400 series motherboard, whether it be a B350 or a B450, is you may have to update the motherboard's BIOS in order to support the new Ryzen 3000 chips. So what I've got here is a Ryzen 3 1200 CPU in here at the moment. And if you don't have one of these older CPUs, if you're going to buy a motherboard, you can request that the person who sends it out updates the BIOS for you. But in this case, we've actually got to update the BIOS twice in order to get this CPU supported because essentially what they did with the newer BIOSes is because the file sizes weren't big enough to support all the new CPUs, they had to drop support for older APUs. I think it is the Bristol Ridge APUs, which, but it didn't really matter anyway, because I don't really know a whole lot of people that bought the Bristol Ridge APUs because they're way inferior to like the 2200 or the 2400G, for example. But once we've updated this BIOS, we can then update it again to the latest BIOS that supports the Ryzen 3000 chips and then we'll finally be able to put our Ryzen 5 3600 in and we'll be good to go. And now updating the BIOS, it's really easy. All you have to do is go to the manufacturer's website, uh, type in the model name of your motherboard and then download that respective BIOS, put it on a USB stick. And then when you boot up your computer, hit delete or F2 keys, and then you can uh, put the USB stick in, go to their BIOS update utility, then find that file, update it, and then you're good to go from there. So we are now up and running with our Ryzen 5 3600 on this A320 motherboard. Now, this does feature a, what would some consider a crappy four plus two phase power design where four phases are dedicated towards the CPU. But just because it's crappy doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. For instance, if I go down to the kebab shop, they could make a crappy kebab, but at least it fills my stomach and I'm good to go for the rest of the day. Think of it, as that way if it ends up passing the test. Now, speaking of the test, we have an RTX 2080 Ti and we've got the Ryzen 5 3600. Now we're gonna run some tests stock and then I'm gonna overclock the whole system and then we're gonna do the same on an X570 motherboard to see how much you guys are missing out on if you are missing out on much or if you're not missing out on much at all against that more expensive motherboard.
So we've now just finished round one of the testing on the A320 motherboard and the results are looking extremely good. But we're gonna change over now to the X570 motherboard and then compare the two. But I will note that I did stumble across this uh, idling issue that people have been talking about where the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs are, I guess you could say are running hotter than normal. You can see here, the CPU is idling at around 40 to 45 degrees and this is in a 23 degrees C environment. So I think it is a little bit high for an idling CPU, especially one like the new Zen 2 CPUs, which are the most efficient of the bunch. The voltage there, the 1.4 volts that you can see, I would say that's not a problem. I would say it's got to do with the responsiveness of the new Zen CPUs, which AMD did make a statement saying that they're supposed to be more snappier than the Ryzen 2000 and 1000 series. But of course, I will look into this further and do a separate video on it because it is tied to memory speeds as well, where I uh, put in the XMP profiles for 3600 megahertz memory on this board, which is a really good thing because it's working absolutely fine. 3600 megahertz uh, memory profiles on this Trident Z Neo is absolutely fine on an A320. And we'll talk about the VRM temps after we run the X570 because they're actually okay too. But the higher wattage being used on idle here has to do with memory speeds also, where if we don't overclock the memory, we're idling at around 20 watts. So that's quite a big jump. But with that aside, let's run the X570 boards and we talk about the Ryzen 5 3600 on an A320 motherboard and give you guys the conclusion. So now we just finished testing the X570 Aorus Pro motherboard and the results are actually really fascinating where we're gonna pull up the Cinebench R20 results first. And this is out of the box with PBO2 enabled on the X570 and surprisingly with the latest BIOS update, I think it's the Agisa 1.03 or something like that, it enables the PBO2 boost to work on the A320 motherboard too and here's the kicker. When we pull up the Cinebench R20 results, we can see that the single core got 482 points on the A320 motherboard and then 3,563. And then over on the X570, we got 3,450 and 456. On average though, I did run these tests a few times, the A320 motherboard was giving better performance for the Ryzen 5 3600 coupled with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. And you're probably thinking, what is going on there? Why is that happening? And it's actually got to do with the fact that because the A320 is a cheaper motherboard, that negative can actually be a positive in this case because I believe it would have to do with the shorter traces that are used on this motherboard as opposed to the X570, which would have longer traces. And so that could be affecting the performance. And the interesting thing is that Trident Z Neo memory, which is really good at CL16 3600 megahertz, that's working absolutely fine on this motherboard too, causing no problems whatsoever. So there's a benefit of using an A320 over an X570. The next benefit's gonna come with the power consumption figures. Now, if you're gonna go out and get an A320 motherboard and a 3900X or a 3700X eight core, you're not doing it right. The A320 motherboards were designed pretty much with that 65 watt TDP CPU limit in mind. And so this is where the Zen 2 Ryzen 5 3600 really just makes a great combination with this motherboard because you're getting the better power efficiency out of the six core 12 thread. And with PBO Boost 2 enabled, it's pretty much finding that sweet spot on that CPU. And so the power consumption surprisingly was leveling out to about 65 watts on the A320 with an Ida64 stress test. Now the race stealth cooler was topping out at around 92 degrees versus 93 degrees on the X570. And the X570 was using 73 watts. So it was actually using about eight watts more on the same stress test as the A320 motherboard. Now you're probably stopping there and thinking, what's going on here? I thought the X570 board had a much better VRM and, and it certainly does, but because the A320 only has four phases, it's switching less. So that's actually adding to the efficiency on the A320 side of things, if that makes any sense. So it's a weird thing that's going on, but I did test out the VRM temperatures 
and the temperatures were absolutely fine, 74 degrees, and the temperatures on this VRM maxed out at 74 degrees with the IR camera, and that's actually a very good score. I like to keep things under 90 degrees for long-term use, and this is well under that. So this A320 board with the Ryzen 5 3600 is going to do an absolutely fine job of keeping that thing performing well. Now the all-core clock speeds were hovering around 3.9 to 4 gigahertz on this motherboard, and so I didn't want to overclock it anymore since I believe PBO Boost 2 has essentially just found a sweet spot overclock out of the box for the CPU. Coupled with the fact that we got the 92 degrees on the race stealth cooler, I didn't want to press it anymore. So manual overclocking is pretty much useless in this case because we've already found the best sweet spot. And now moving through some of the other figures like Geekbench 4, we got pretty much a similar score between the X570 and the A320 motherboard with the Ryzen 5 3600. Moving over to Far Cry New Dawn, we saw the A320 and the X570 pretty much getting the exact same results. Though I will point out though, the A320 did consistently have slightly higher minimums, if that accounts for anything. And then Tom Clancy's The Division 2 uh, was pretty much giving out really similar numbers across a heap of different runs that we did here. So that now leaves us at the conclusion of this motherboard pairing with the Ryzen 5 3600. And I think it's a really good deal at the moment. Uh, keep in mind, you do have to make sure that the BIOS update is installed so you can get the best performance out of it as well as use your Ryzen 5 3600. So if you do go out and buy an A320, make sure it's got the BIOS update pre-updated so you don't come into any troubles. Or of course, if you've got a Ryzen 3 1200, that's an easy CPU to keep on hand like I do here at Tech Yesh City, where I can quickly update those BIOSes and then get the latest CPUs running on the boards. But I was blown away by the performance figures. The temperatures were absolutely fine on the VRM on this motherboard. And of course, it supports the memory speeds going all the way up to 3600 MHz CL16. So there's really no drawbacks to this little combination, except of course, you won't be able to upgrade to an eight core or a 12 core. But if you're just building this PC for the next three years, then in three years time, there's probably gonna be a DDR5 motherboard that'll need to be upgraded anyway. So a combo like this is a great solution for a one-time PC. It's gonna last you for years to come. Now, another good thing about this little motherboard, at least the one I got here, is it was the cheapest motherboard I could get from a local retailer. And it's got USB 3, it's got PCIe, NVMe, X4 as well, which is linked up to the CPU. And overall, it uses less power. So when we did the from the wall stats in Ida 64, we're getting around 135 watts from the wall versus 146 watts on the X570 board. So I was using around 11 watts less in ideal conditions. And the last thing to go over is the idle voltages and the idle temperatures. They uh, were a little bit high. Uh, we, on the A320, we were coming in with around 34 watts. On the X570, we were coming in around 39 watts. And so the power draw is a little bit higher than that 22 watt figure when we didn't have the memory overclocked. Uh, but the CPU was idling around 40 to 45 degrees. And that's nothing to worry about because you're, ultimately your power draw will be current and volts together. So even though the voltage is high, the current isn't being high. So your CPU is not burning up all the time. There's nothing to worry about there. But I will investigate this further and give you guys a dedicated video to that because there's a few things to go over with it. But I don't think it's anything to be really worried about at this point in time. If anything, the biggest thing that came out of this video for me was the Ray Stealth Cooler going up to 92 or 93 degrees on an Ida64 stress test. So that was a little bit high considering if we went into summer and temperatures went up 10 degrees ambient, what would the temperatures be like then? Would it adjust the speeds? That's something I don't know at the moment yet and I'm actually curious to find out. But in terms of the idle temperatures and wattage, if it really worries you that much, you may wish to get a better CPU cooler. But in terms of the idle power draw and the temperatures, they're really nothing to worry about, like 40 to 45 degrees. Put it this way, 40 to 45 degrees, I'm not gonna be losing sleep over that. And although that may seem like negatives, there actually is some really good benefits to that, but we'll talk about that in a dedicated video. And with that aside, A320 plus a Ryzen 5 3600, at least the Gigabyte A320M hyphen H is good to go. And I can recommend this combo. Of course, don't go out and buying a 12 core and eight core coupling it with his motherboard. It's not designed for that. But in terms of getting a really good bang for buck build going, this combo is definitely good. Ryzen 5 3600, A320, 
it gets my recommendation. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. But also let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about this combo. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.